all and welcome back to the channel. I have recently bought, um, with some vouchers that I got gifted, uh, a set of Oxford uh, auxiliary lights. Um, I've just completed 10 years in my job, so I had a really nice voucher, so I sort of questioned what can I spend the money on, and uh, I just wanted to make the bike that a little bit more visible, so this seemed a really good choice. I did a lot of um, research on the internet, and these seem to come out tops, uh, very reasonably priced for what you're getting for an LED lamp. So today I'm going to do the install on the Himalayan. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to put them yet or what's involved, but I will show you what you get in the kit. Wow, they look really nice. Uh, so on the side of the box, we've got a bit of a vague wiring diagram. Uh, of where to put the wires. Um, let me just show you what you get. So there are the lamps. Uh, they're not massive. I didn't want anything too big on the bike. Uh, the dimensions are uh, about two inches on the front face and about uh, two and a half inches in length. So nice and small for the Himalayan. It's only a little bike, so these should suit it quite well. So what do we get in the box? So we obviously get a pair of lamps. There they are. Really nice, uh, nice water sealed, uh, glue lined heat shrink on all the uh, joints and stuff. Looks like there's going to be a bit of wiring involved. Uh, so we've got brackets, uh, the wiring harness and the uh, supplied switch gear. I think that these are just a 10 watt power draw um, which uh, is really good for a set of lamps uh, and I think they put out a fair few lumens <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head but go to the uh, Oxford website and I'm sure the info is on there so let's get on and see where we're gonna fit them so after much deliberation and faff um, I really struggled to find somewhere for these to fit on the Himalayan uh, that looked nice. You know, I didn't really want to put them on the crash bars because, you know, if I come off, they're going to get smashy smashed. Uh, so I found a really handy little kind of a cross bracket on it. Uh, and they seem to fit quite nice down there. Let me just show you. I don't know if you can see that there. So, yeah, that fits in there quite nice. So I'm just about to do the other side. I'm going to fit it on there, so um, hopefully that will work. <laughs> what a nightmare. It's literally just taken me a good hour to suss that out without uh, getting it wrong. See you in a bit. This is the mounting bracket supplied by Oxford. It relies on a, a nut head to uh, tighten it up so it fits in there. Uh, now the nuts they supply are, there's a short one and there's a short one. So for how I'm fitting these, I've had to just dig through my nut and bolt collection and find something a little bit slightly longer because I am bolting onto effectively part of, you know, this front mount. So, you know, we want to be able to put a locking nut on the back and make sure it doesn't really go anywhere. So, um, yeah, that is the route I'm taking. So there you go. There's the bracket attached to the frame. So get a little bit sticking out the other end to uh, put a lock nut on uh, it is a little bit long but it will do for now <laughs> that's all I've got <laughs> so something else I just had to get round uh, the, uh, so I've moved the horn on the other side it was set off to the side so I've moved that upright to make room for the lamp over there and of course I've got to this side and the oil cooler is in the way of this one. So anyway, I've just kind of like swiveled them up so they're up against the bottom of the bars and that seems to fit in there quite nicely. Uh, so they're on there nice and tight and uh, now it's time to see about the wiring. So as you can see, I've now got the seat off and uh, the tank uh, just pulled out of the way. So I've just rested that on a seat so I can just run the wiring up under the tank and keep it all nice and tidy. So I fitted the dashboard switch, uh, which just needs connecting up. So I've just hooked up the wiring and Oxford seems to supply the shortest lead for it. Um, I mean, the Himalayan is not a big bike, and I know they do do an extension kit, but you shouldn't really need it on a bike like this. 
but where I want to route the cables to keep it tidy it's, it's just not viable because there's just not enough length let me just show you so I'll put the switch gear there I've plugged the switch in down here uh, I was going to run it all the way down the frame bish bosh I've put the bike on full lock so it's its longest length and three inches too short now that seems a bit ridiculous to me um i'm not very impressed with what i've paid for this kit uh you'd expect it to fit at least a royal enfield himalayan we're not fitting this to a gs come on oxford let's get it right um not entirely sure what to do yet but i will keep you posted <laughs> so what should have probably took like a couple of hours uh has turned into a whole afternoon and i'm still no closer to getting it fixed um what a nightmare of a job uh not very impressed so far uh, i'll talk you through that uh when we hit it again tomorrow but i'm gonna go and have my tea now and continue in the morning so see you tomorrow good morning and welcome back to the channel so i had a bit of a sleepless night last night trying to think you know how am i going to do this because this is like it should be a really simple job and it's just i think i was like really tired yesterday i'd had my flu jabs and i just felt a bit grotty and uh, so like i thought you know i haven't got to mount that switch up on the bars because i'm going to generally have these running when i'm riding so it should be a case of switching them on as i self and uh and, and switch it off when i get home you know that'll be it uh it's just basically fitting them for more visibility and be that little bit safer so this morning uh i've got the tank fully off now which is making life a lot easier and then i have routed the cables i'll show you that in a minute uh, and then i found a home for the switch so i will show you that now so you can see here is the back of the light i've routed the wire up the back of that rail it comes up here and then the two plug connectors are there i hope you can see those and then i've routed it down the frame uh, down under the frame and then up here into this wiry pickle that you can see in front of you now because the uh <laughs> the wire into the switch is excessively short so i've mounted my switch uh here so you know it's in with an easy reach uh on the uh, on the clutch side so um you know i can just reach down and, and flick it on and then i've rooted that up here up the back of the frame and the plug comes out nicely here uh, which will enable me to route the wire round the back of the tray here up under these two stays and plug it in there and just cable tie nicely down into that groove and then i've just got to figure out this trigger wire uh, and what i'm going to do with that so also while i've got the tank off uh, and everything else i thought it was a nice opportunity to put a dual uh, socket a usb port on it so when i do do some longer trips i can charge my phone just put the uh dual usb port down here it's a switched one um again the cable's a little bit short um so i'm just going to place it down there on the dash again i've run the wires uh, from the front and down the same route so hopefully all this will work eventually <laughs> it's been a bigger job than i anticipated but hey let's keep on keeping on after a whole lot of faffing i have got around to doing the wiring so in this kit within the wiring there's a, a trigger or a substitute connector that can be used so the one connection you can um, tap into your uh, high beam switch uh, which i didn't really want to do because like i say i want these as riding lights um, or you can use a substitute line uh, which is a blue wire uh, that you can tap into a switched 12 volt power feed sorry this is starting to sound really dull now but <laughs> it is what it is so you do need a little bit of electrical knowledge uh, to fit these wires i'm lucky uh, i do know bits and pieces and i've got a, a nice box of connectors and heat shrink and all that sort of thing so uh, i've now installed it uh, completely and i've just got a little bit of tidying up to do um, but i'll show you uh, exactly what i've done 
So what they call the substitute wires is blue wire here and it runs from the switch and basically the uh, the relay in the system it needs uh, power to trigger the relay effectively. Um, like I say it's all a little bit of overkill I think but uh, hey ho if you're going to engineer it it's over engineer it. Um, so anyway I have run this wire uh, up next to the switch wire in uh, and then I've brought it round and I've brought it up the side of my secret compartment tray. Uh, and run it up to the back wiring and then I've got the um, switched power coming from the back light. Now, like I say, I'm lucky in the fact I had some uh, connectors uh, that match the Royal Enfield ones, although it's white. Um, and I've just put that into the uh, power feed for the back light. Uh, and I've just done a quick dry run and uh, it appears that it's all working. So all I've got left to do is connect my uh, dual socket uh, USB plug that I've installed on the front. So I'll put some nice ring connectors on there. I've got to uh, connect up um, the wiring for my heated gloves for the winter and then uh, connect up this and then just re-tidy or get it all cable tied back in nice and tidy so nothing's going to uh, catch on the base of the seat and eat through any wires so uh, I'm going to carry on and do that now for goodness sake just putting on my ring terminals for my USB port always nice to have the right set of cable crimps um, of course I collected quite a lot of those when I was uh, building the uh, chop so I bought all the right um, cable crimps for basically doing the right crimps because if you over crimp them you're going to be breaking wires and uh, obviously like under crimping them and your wires are going to fall out so it's always worth just investing that bit of money in your in the right crimps for the job there we go after a bit of uh, jiggery pokery and faffing about uh, a few cable ties here and there um, that's all in there really nice and tidy now um, I think it's all working uh, but I really want to test it with the bike running so just a case now of putting the uh, fuel tank back on and all the goodies and see if it all works fingers crossed eh now stupidly before I started this job I remembered I'd just filled up with fuel so I've got a full tank of petrol in here so it's really heavy uh, so I'm just going to kind of lodge it on get everything connected back up and then uh, hopefully wriggle it into place <laughs> but it's heavy <laughs> one hour later So, moment of truth, the tank is back on, the seats are back on, everything's tucked in. Uh, I always worry about after having a bike apart, if it's going to start again, uh, let alone if everything I've done is going to work. So, let's see. There we go. So, it works. Let's see if the headlamps work. Ready for the big switch on. Goodness me, they're bright. I think uh, people will definitely see me coming with those. <laughs> so I'm just going to set up now a headlamp aim just to make sure I'm not completely blinding people. So I'm just going to put the garage door down and get the alignment just about right. So they're just tipping down that little bit and not blinding all the oncoming traffic. Just blanked off the headlamp. Uh, so I can get an idea of where these are sort of pointing. This side is still quite high, so I'm just going to have a go at tweaking it down a little bit. There we go. Right. I'm just going to switch them off before I get gassed to death in the, in the garage. But there you go. The full installation of the Oxford auxiliary lamps onto a Royal Enfield Himalayan. quite the difference in the lighting power right there. So that just about concludes the fitting uh, of the daytime running lights on the Himalayan. Uh, ha, you won't believe what happened uh, just while I was getting everything ready and um, 
getting stuff back in order, I managed to drop the Himalayan on its side. These things happen, I'm tired. Um, and anyway, I've managed to bend the bars. So next job on the list is a new set of bars on the Himalayan. Hey ho, these things happen. So next job, new bars. Harumph. <laughs> that is it. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, I hope it's been a little bit helpful. Uh, it has been a bit of a nightmare, more of a job than I thought. Uh, but anyway, if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for further updates and some new bars being fitted and some new mirrors because that broke too. Right, I will see you in the next one. Ride safe. <laughs>